Hello friends. In this video tutorial, we will be discussing about the organizational behavior. We will understand what the nature of the organizations, the reasons uh, why they exist and uh, the organizational effectiveness. Then uh, we will be discussing about the, its foundation, the importance of the organizations and the limitations. Also, we'll see the historical evolutions of the organizational behavior and some important approaches for the to study the organizational behavior. Now, before we proceed, let's understand why or what are the organization means or what does organizations actually stand for. Now, the organizations are as old as the human race itself. Archaeologists have discovered massive temples dating back to 3500 BC that was constructed through the organized sections of many people. This fact that these impressive monuments were built suggests that not only did complex organizations exist, but that the people in them worked cohesively for common causes. Now, what then are these powerful constructs that we call organizations? They are a group of people who work independently towards some purpose. That is, organizations are not physical structures. Rather, they are people who work together to achieve a set of goals. People who work in the organizations have structured pattern of interactions, meaning that they expect each other to complete certain tasks in an organized way. So this is a general understanding of the organization. Who creates this organizations then? Often an individual or a group of people who believe that they possess necessary skills and knowledge form organizations to produce goods and services. In this way, the organizations like restaurants, Wipro, and uh, design studios are created. At times, several people form a group to respond to a perceived need by creating organizations. People with lots of money may invest jointly to build a vacation resort. A group of people with similar beliefs may build a new place of worship or citizens of a state may flow a new political party. So, in general, the entrepreneurship is a term used to describe the process by which people recognize opportunities, garner resources and put them to use to produce goods and services. The rewards of entrepreneurship are as varied as the spiritual satisfactions derived by the believers who built a place of worship or the profit generated for the founders and the shareholders of a resort that successfully responded to the people's recreational need. So this is what the general understanding of the organization. So in short, we can say that organization means a group of people organized to achieve a set of goals in a certain expected guidelines for the getting some rewards in return. Now, let's see then why do organizations exist? Now, there is uh, in uh, point wise, it's, uh, it, has, it can be categorized as to increase the specializations and division of labor firstly. That means you can say that the people who work in the organizations become more productive and efficient at what they do than people who work alone. This is very, very important because you'll see when you were working in a group, you tend to be more efficient than when you are working alone. For many kinds of productive work, the use of organization allows the development of specializations and division of labor. The collective nature of organization allows individuals to focus on a narrow area of expertise which allows them to become more skilled or specialized at what they do. There are several you know, firms uh, which have provided enabling environment for individuals to enhance their skills for organizations and individual growth. 
So it has been identified that the best employers in India and top 10 of them together with reasons why they have been ranked thus are you know as uh, something like this. For example, Tata Steel, you know, organizations are the key drivers for attractive or attractions and the retentions of the talent is that organization philosophy and the culture and the job stability. Or let's say, for example, Indian oil corporations. So the people uh, stay there, or people retention policies can be like companies' brand image, then work culture, learning and growth opportunities, challenging work assignments, and growing organizations. So this is one of the few reasons to quote why the people or the can uh, like to work in such organizations. The next comes is to use large-scale technology. That is, organizations are able to take advantage of the economies of scale and scope that result from the use of modern automated computerized technology. That is, economies of scales are the cost savings that result when goods and services are produced in large volumes by automated productions. That is, economies of scopes are the cost savings that result when an organization is able to use underutilized resource more effectively because they can be shared across the several different products or tasks. That is, economies of scope as well as econom of scale can be achieved, for example, when it is possible to design an automated production line that can make several different types of products simultaneously. Then we talk about to manage the external environment. This is one of, another one of the reasons why the organizations, uh, you know, exist. That is, the pressures from the environment in which the organizations operate necessitate organizing productive resources. That is, an organization's environment includes not only economic, social, and political factors, but also the sources from which it obtains inputs and marketplaces into which it releases its output. Managing complex environment is a task beyond the abilities of most individuals, but an organization has the resource to develop specialists to anticipate or attempt to influence the many demand demands from the environment. The specialization allows the organizations to create more value for itself, its members and customers. That is to manage the external environment. Then comes to economize, economize on transaction cost. That is when people cooperate to produce goods and services, certain problems arise as they learn what to do and how to work with others to perform a task effectively. That is, people have to jointly decide who will do which task. That is the division of labor who will get paid what amount and how to decide if each worker is doing his or her share of the work. The cost associated with negotiating, monitoring and governing exchange between people are called transaction cost. Organization's ability to control the exchange between people reduces the transaction cost associated with the exchange. And then comes to exert power and control. That is, organizations can exert great pressure on individuals to conform to task and production requirements in order to increase the production efficiency. To get a job done efficiently, it is important for people to come to work in a predictable fashion, to behave in the interest of the organizations and to accept the authority of the organization and its managers. So, all those requirements make a production less costly and more efficient, but put a burden on the individuals who must conform to these regulations. That is, when individuals work for themselves, they need to address only their own needs. When they work for an organization, however, they must pay attention to the organization needs as well as their. So, organizations can discipline or fire workers who fail to confirm and reward good performance with promotions and increased rewards. So because 
employment uh, promotions and increased rewards are important and often scarce. The organizations can use them to exert power over individuals. So taking all these five factors help explain why more value can often be created when people work together, coordinate their actions in an organized setting than when they work alone. So over time, the stability created by an organization provides a setting in which the organization and its members can increase their skills and capabilities and the ability of the organization to create value additions by leaps and bounds. For example, in the last 10 years, Infosys has grown to become the most powerful software in the world because the Naran Murti, its founder, created an organizational setting in which people are given the freedom to develop their skills and capabilities to create value, the valuable new products. So this is all about why do the organizations exist.